So, you want to create your own digital resource as well. You've come to the right place. While I can't go over every possible scenario, I can go over a lot of techniques and skills and tools that you can use in order to create your own resources. So don't think of this video as a step-by-step -step guide, rather a starting point to create your own process. Everyone's gonna wanna create something different. And if I went over every single possible idea, scenario, it, it, it could take forever. So really you'll need three things in order to get started. So that'll be whatever the resources that you wanna digitize, something in order to convert it to digital, and then software in order to edit it. For me, I like to use barcodes, receipts, envelopes, a bunch of different stuff. That's what I like to use, but you can use whatever you want. I also use a digital camera in order to digitize everything, but you could use a scanner or your phone if that's all you have around. That being said, I'm gonna cover a bunch of different techniques, so hopefully one of them will be useful to you. With that being said, let's get started. So I've got my camera set up ready, but I just wanna go over a couple things before we get started. First, whatever you're taking pictures of, make sure that it has a simple or a plain background. So for me, as you can kind of see here, I have a black piece of paper or a gray piece of paper or a white piece of paper. So simple backgrounds that will be easy to remove the background from. I also want to recommend using whatever has the most contrast. So for instance, since I'm using these envelopes, that's what I'll be using to make these resources. Putting it on a white sheet of paper, it just blends right in. So it's not really going to be that helpful. But if I switch to the black, you can already see there's a lot more contrast. So being able to find the edges correctly or letting the program find the edges is going to be a lot quicker than trying to do that with a white background. So make sure the background is simple and has a lot of contrast to the subject that you're taking a photo of. What I would also like to recommend is to evenly light the scene as best as you possibly can. So for instance, I'm using this window as a light source, but because there's objects in front of it and the window isn't exactly right over, it's not gonna be uh, even lighting. So I have this light right here to kind of counteract and kind of help light it a little bit more evenly. So that way, whenever I'm editing and adding contrast, there's not gonna be one spot that's super bright and one spot that's super dark. It'll be evenly lit, so I don't have to worry about that in post. Let's kind of jump in. So, so personally, I like to just kind of tear things up. Just kind of get some interesting shapes. Doesn't really matter, just as long as you have whatever you're, whatever you want to take a picture of. I won't do it since I'm recording, but whenever I'm ready, I would zoom in so it takes up a bigger portion of the frame and then take a picture. So that way I have the uh, highest quality image that I possibly can. And then if I zoom in or crop in, it, it's not gonna be deteriorating as if I had taken it from this angle where really this is the frame that I would be using, which isn't a whole lot of the screen that I'm taking up. So with all that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and start kind of ripping this up and taking pictures and then we'll just jump into the program and I'll start editing those pictures. So I just finished taking pictures. So I'm gonna take these pictures, upload them, and then just make a couple edits and a camera raw filter just so they're a little bit nicer uh, and then we'll jump into the program and I'll start showing you how you can remove the background so you can use these as PNGs and kind of put them wherever you want. All right, so I've got my photo in here. I did a little bit of editing and a camera raw filter just to kind of make it a little bit more contrasted, make sure it's a little bit more evenly lit, make sure the white is white. But other than that, it's just the picture that we took before. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can use to remove the background from the photo. So I'm gonna kind of take you through a couple different techniques. Hopefully one of those techniques will be useful to you. So the first technique will be to either erase or mask out the background. So you could just take a brush and paint black and erase. This will be a little bit hard, a little bit tricky, but you know, if you're not doing something that's as detailed as this, you know, where you have a bunch of fraying and the edges aren't exactly clean cut, you know, this probably isn't going to be the best technique for that. But that is definitely an option that you can use if that's all you have. Photoshop, you also have 
all these different selection tools like the polygonal, the magnetic, the lasso tool. You know, if this was just a straight line where all you needed was to get this, you know, something like that, that would be perfect, it'd be easy, and you wouldn't have to go through all the steps of the uh, other stuff that I'm gonna cover in this video. But once again, you're not gonna be able to get a lot of the tiny details like the fraying on the edges um, that kind of make it really feel like, oh, like you just ripped this off a piece of paper and you're really preserving those details to as high a degree as you possibly can. Now, another one that you could use is the pen tool, which gives you a little bit more flexibility since you can control exactly where the bends are, how the curvature is. You know, learning this tool is kind of hard whenever you're first learning it, but figuring it out and becoming good with it is very useful. So if you can take the time to learn it, please do. But once again, the selection that you're going to get is going to cover all of these really tiny, tiny details like the fraying here. You're not going to be able to get that. You could definitely take the time and try to get as much of it as you possibly could, but you'd be sitting here for hours and hours and it probably wouldn't really have the best outcome. So the next one that we'll do is the different selections. So you have the magic wand tool, which we can be really good sometimes, but you can see what it's doing is selecting just the white and of the black. So if I were to paint black, yeah, it looks like it worked, but as you can see, it didn't remove anything. Out. So you'd have to go back and add all that, and you'd kind of have to be a little bit careful with the edges. So it's not exactly the best. So if you were working with something that was just one color and you didn't have to worry about very detailed selections, that might be a good option for you. You also have the quick selection tool, which this is a pretty decent option. It's gonna try to find the edges in the photo um, and then create a selection based on that. So as you can see, it actually does a pretty good job. So let's uh, actually we'll remove the background. And as you can see, it actually did a pretty good job. Uh, you could probably clean it up a little bit more, but honestly, for the time that we spent on it, that was actually really good. So that's definitely a pretty good option uh, as far as making really detailed selections or making a quick selection for something that's a solid color or something that has very refined edges. And that's why I kind of said earlier, pick something that has a simple background because then the uh, algorithm or however this technically works can find the edges and go, oh, this is where the object stops. So rather than, you know, getting a bunch of the background, so if I like click on this, see it's like kind of starting to select a bunch of extra stuff that we don't want. So that just means they have to go back and try to refine it. Obviously I have very clean edges, so that's not gonna happen. But, you know, if you were to take a photo of an apple in a kitchen, you know, you might get some of the countertop or the, the backsplash or, you know, whatever's behind it. And that just means they're gonna have to spend more time cleaning it up, which isn't ideal, especially when you're taking a bunch of photos of a bunch of different things and you're just trying to get through them quickly. So that leaves us with the object selection tool, which is very similar to the last tool that we just used. Um, so it's gonna take kind of a generative approach. So sometimes it's a little bit hit or miss, as you can see here, it's not that great, uh, at least right off the bat. But what we can do is if we double click this mask, we'll open up the uh, refinement panel. So if we use this tool right here, this button, you can actually kind of click along here and you can kind of see it starting to remove those really nasty black edges. So if you were to go along the entire thing and remove those, I'm not gonna do that in this, this instance just to save some time, but then you can decontaminate and you can kind of see it's kind of bringing, bringing all that back. So you can see now it's done a lot better of a job, but sometimes it kind of creeps in, especially, especially in this instance when it's trying to remove black, but there's black in the object that we're also removing. So that can, that can be hit or miss. Also, if I use a color that destroys your retinas, really bright red, you, know, you can kind of see the details a little bit more. And sometimes, let me see, it's kind of hard to see. You might be able to see it but there's some little white specks, just some extra details that didn't really get removed correctly. 
and you would have to go back in and clean those up if you want to get a really nice clean edge. Sometimes it does, does this way worse than others. So like I said, it can be kind of hit or miss sometimes. I do really like to use this tool and I use this a lot. So this is definitely a good option. So the last one, and I do use this one as well, is, and I don't know if this is available in other programs, but over here, if you go to channels, so Photoshop separates this into the different uh, values based on the colors, and then I'll give you uh, different contrast values. So what you wanna do is select the one with the highest contrast. In this instance, it's the blue channel. So we'll copy that. We'll do Control L to bring up the levels. So I'm gonna just add more contrast. And so it starts to kind of look like a mask. And that's essentially what we're creating. So that this isn't affecting the original image. We're just kind of creating a selection for us. And if you wanna go a step further, if you bring out your brush tool, you can go to Overlay and that will darken anything that's below 50% luminance. So like this stuff down here, they'll get right, get rid of that. But if I try to paint over this, because it's so white, so it's not gonna be painted over. See, it's gonna start affecting that, but it's gonna keep a lot of the details. But let's just say that's the selection you wanted. You can control click, so you have a selection. So we're actually doing the inverse selection. As you can see, that did the trick. But once again, since there was black in it and we were removing the black, it's also removed what's inside of the paper. So we could go back and add that back in if we wanted to. Uh, but you know, that can be tedious. But one of the good things about this trick is it retains the transparency of objects. So if you look here, actually let me add a background just so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, you can see here, this is where I painted, but you can see how it's actually looking through the luminance of the paper and it's keeping some of the lighter and the darker. So it's not exactly a black and white where it's, it's either in or it's not. It has a different transparency value. So you can kind of keep that, which is really nice if you're doing something like taking pictures of paper where you want to make it feel like, you know, it's translucent rather than just being either completely flat. So it's either, you know, there or it's not. So that's a very useful trick if you're trying to get some kind of transparency. So I'm just gonna reset this back to where it was. So let's just say, let's just go with the quick select tool just for this instance. We'll remove the background and then we can save this out as a PNG. So I'm gonna show you a couple ways that I like to use these PNGs or a couple different ways that you can use them or just kind of give you some ideas for how you can use different things that you can find around your house or whatever in order to make your own resources and kind of how to use them. So as you can see, um, selection wasn't exactly great. I would usually clean it up, but for the instance of this video, this will do. So now I can obviously put this wherever I want. You know, I can put something behind it or on top of it and it's gonna keep that transparency. Or if I wanted to, I could clip it to something to kind of, you know, make the texture appear on something. So let's say I have this cool pattern that I want to use, but I want it to have a red background. So I'll change the object to red. And now I can hit multiply. And now I can apply that texture to this color. Another cool way that you can use it is just kind of use it as a way to make interesting looking um, objects and shapes that you wouldn't normally be able to come up with. So now I can apply a clipping mask and make this completely red. So if I wanted to have something that had like textures on the ends, but you know, I'd, I don't wanna have to go in and make that all myself, I can do that. And now I can overlay something on top of or coming out of, you know, there's a lot of different ways they can use this to kind of create unique shapes that you wouldn't be able to normally make or would be very time intensive to make. So that's how I create my resources in a couple ways that I like to use them. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you and will spark some ideas for resources that you might want to use and how you might be able to digitize them so you can use them over and over again whenever you like. That being said, I do have a free resource pack down below in the description that you can download yourself. It's got a bunch of different things from my library that I've just kind of thrown in there that you can feel free to use however you want. I also have a larger library that you can purchase from Creative Market. I'll link that down below in case you're interested in that as well. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the rest of my channel and consider subscribing. That's all for this video, so I'll see you in the next one.